Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Clinton Lofthouse and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. This week we will be going through this image here, which is the forest of gold trees and we will be dissecting each layer and discussing what we did and why. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art, advanced Photoshop techniques, and more. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video and enjoy. So as discussed, this is the image we are walking through which is the Wolves of Gold Trees and it's part of the Days Gone By series. So let's take this into Photoshop and let's start working through the layers from the bottom right to the very top so we can see what went into this and I can discuss each layer. So the first layer is the sky. So this is the uh, stock image that I used. I got three from somewhere like Pixabay. Um, and I always like to, I think if you've got a good sky, it's always a good base for an image. So skies are important, don't just use any old sky. I go through lots of different skies until I get to the one that I think will work. And I quite like ones with a lot of contrast and colours. And it's good to play around um, and get to know what skies work and what skies don't work. And then I did some curves adjustments with these just to, for the tone and then the colour. So as we do in most composites, you match tone and you match colour. And I would have matched that later on once I've got the other elements in. But as going through the layers, it works in a very non-linear way. So then I brought in this here. So what I wanted was a, I wanted a, a full moon in the sky. So what I've done here is I found this stock image of a moon and then I blend this uh, sky out, out. Or I hide it behind the trees. Either one works. So again, just playing with the tone here. So as you can see, I've played with the colour and the tone to match this sky in the background here. So this is a hue saturation adjustment. Now playing with the tone again of both of these images. And then a church, a big part of this image was the church, which is a church in York. And I wanted it to have a centerpiece in the image because um, in the forest of gold trees, this church would have a lantern at the top of it, which would guide travellers through the forest and to the city of York. So again, I just took this photo myself one morning in York, uh, and then I basically cut out that church and I brought it into here. I've then, with curves, I've brought down the tone of the church, and then I've started painting in the light. On a blank layer as you can see here and started painting in the lights to make it look like this lantern part of the church is lit so then again on another blank uh, with a curves adjustment just brightening that and then again adding some glow now as you can see here on a blank layer just painting that glow in on a screen blend mode on all three of these apart from the third one which is linear dodge as you can see so the last one here is the center or the the kind of hot spot of the lantern as you can see here just point to it there and then this other one here was a little bit of the the light catching the atmosphere of the cloud or the uh, the light kind of bouncing off the atmosphere around this church so let's close the church down and then we started creating the wall so with the wall, the, if anyone's been to York, there is a Roman uh, wall around the city. So I also wanted that wall to be a little bit of the feature of this image. So basically, I, again, I went out one morning and took this photo of the wall. And I basically just used the same photo and duplicated it and pulled it in and just lined it up to create this wall. And the reason I can do it like this and so uh, liberally and very easily is because a lot of this is hit so you won't see most of this you'll just get the, the shape and the a little bit of texture of this wall going through but, but because it's hidden I didn't have to spend a lot of time making sure it's perfect and it's all blended together and that's sometimes what you need to do in composite you don't want to spend hours on something what's not going to be seen uh, if it's going to be hidden or if you can hide it a little bit then it doesn't have to be 
a very difficult task. So let's hide the wall layer and then bringing in some uh, leaves and foliage and also this is just creating the, um, the frame of the center here. And as you can see, with a uh, curves adjustment, I just bring down the tone of that tree there. And then again, bringing in some more there. Again, because all this is kind of going to be hidden between the trees and the foliage, I'm just duplicating the same thing and then using it again, bringing down the tone with curves. And some more. This time made it a little bit darker with the curves adjustment. We've got the moon now behind this little bit of foliage. And now this is where the main bulk of the background begins to um, be built. So the background images, I use lots of stock images for this. Um, some were my own, some weren't. Uh, a lot of these uh, of the background I actually took in the Isle of Skye or Scotland. So I just keep seeing these coming in. I just kind of brought all these in and I just played around with them and started blending in and out and see if I could get a background that looks realistic. And sometimes if you, when you're using organic uh, stock images like grass and trees, you can get away with so much more than if it's like a man-made structure or very straight edges. So again, just bringing all these stock images in here now. So as you can see, we started to build this background here. So all I did was with layer masks, I just blended in and out until I got something what looked like it looked quite realistic. So I'm just bringing in some grass to the bottom foreground here. And then start dodging and burning a little bit of the, um, the background here. And then darkening everything as well. With a curves adjustment so just pulling down the tone of everything or oh, this main background here but keeping some light coming through these areas here so we're going to start bringing the wolves in now so we've got this wolf on the far left so again cut out use refine edge on the hair and then as we do with every element what comes into a composite you just do your color matching and your tone matching so colour curves, curves, like so. And then obviously we wanted this tree to be overlapping, so I cut out a piece of this tree and then just brought that above the wool flare, like so. And then with curves adjustment again, pulled down the tone so it matched the rest of the tree. And I just started playing with it. It looks a bit too contrasty around these edges, so I just wanted to pull up the contrast a little bit so it matched so now it all blends a little bit better it all tonally matches and then we brought in the female uh, model which I shot in a studio so we hired the costume um, and we shot the model in York Photography Studio I kind of used a, a gelled light here to mimic the light what would be coming from the lantern and then the rest was basically fill so we've brought the model in and then we just started adding uh, so we started toning the model and changing the colors and then we added some dodge and burn so we cleaned up the model as you can see the cleanup was here so I took out some creases on the dresses so I'll turn that off for now and then we um, refuse saturation we uh, changed the model's hair from the pink or purple or whatever color that was we changed it to more of a blondie brown color we then played around with the tone and the color and then as you can see the clean up here then we added some dodge and burn not loads this time and then we added another dodge and burn just highlighting these areas where the uh, light was falling and then I retouched the candle on a blank layer. Just a little bit of 
Um, I don't know if it's shadow from the glass or it was maybe from the light. It was just landing on the candle there, so we just retouched that out. And then we started adding the glow to the lamp as well. So again, these are just blank layers and just painting on linear dodge blend mode and color dodge and sometimes uh, screen. Just painting the effect of the lantern in there. And then obviously because it was, it's the olden days, it was a candle, it was made out of wax or whatever it was made from, there would be smoke, a little bit of smoke coming from that too. So we brought the, the little bit of smoke in and then just again added a little bit more of glow and a little bit of a colour to the smoke as well. And then we carried on bringing the wolves in. So we had the wolf on the, in the foreground. So this is the colour temperature he was when we pulled him in. So we pulled the, we cut out the, again cut out um, most areas with pen tool and then used refined edge on the fur and then with curves and we would start uh, changing the colour and the tone of the wolf. Also a little bit of uh, lightening on this side as well. And then we brought in the wolf on the far right over here again. Curves and to curves for the colour matching, curves for the tone matching and it's the same process for every element that we bring in. Again the next wolf was the back left. So curves, curves, curves as you can see and then on these are uh, these are the shadows as well underneath Again with curves, just then, then just painting it underneath them because it's uh, quite a dark area. The the shadows would be mixed in a little bit with the uh, the tone of the whole image. And back wolf right, and obviously I spelled it wolf there. <laughs> this is my uh, quick typing, but it's supposed to say back wolf uh, right. So we bring that one in as well. So we've got this wolf here, and then again with curves we just do colour matching and tone matching and add some a little bit of shadow there and then we have the let me start bringing in oh I added some glow to the wolves eyes as well so it's like the light of the lamp is being reflected in these eyes and it just adds a little bit more menace to the wolves as well especially this one here this one looks quite menacing and that one actually and then we just started to darken the image a little bit. So again, curves. A lot of what I use is curves. It's just so reliable. It's when you get used to it. it there's a bit of a learning curve, but when you get used to it, you can pretty much use curves on everything, which, as you can see, I do. So where was I? So, the fog, so I started bringing some more foreground leaves, So as you can see here. So uh, changing the colour and the tone with curves. And then bringing some more, bringing the tree in now on the left hand side it's for some foreground kind of depth. So again with curves, just darkening that and changing the colour. And then some more above there again, curves and curves, colour and tone matching. And then I wanted to add some moon glow as well. So the blank layer. On Linear Dodge I just painted a little bit of glowing around that moon there and kind of blended it over the leaves so you blend in as well to get a little bit of that realism. And then the photo filter, I just what I do is I use that right at the beginning so when I start bringing all the different elements in I'll just put a photo filter above so it just kind of, as you're bringing stuff in it does blend it a little bit, it's just a nice little trick. Um, it's nothing massive, uh, it just helps me more when I am compositing. And then we started bringing out some detail of the image. So we did this with a plugin, so Nick Color Effects 4 Detail Extractor. So I just did that. So th this is destructive. So once you've done this, you can't do anything below it. So just remember that. And then I started playing with the color. So as you can see here, let's uh, start from the beginning with this color. So 
Again, I wanted to do the overall contrast play with that, so we did that with curves. Then I brought in a gradient map. As you can see, I brought more greens in, so it all blends into this forest scene. So it's looking very green now, and it all looks like it does actually sit together in this scene. And then again with selective colour, I like to add a little bit of colour into the shadows, and I wanted to bring some reds in. Obviously it's a complementary colour of green, but it just really adds something to the shadows of the image. And you get that real painterly feel, and that's kind of what I was going for with this image. I wanted it to be like something you would have maybe seen in a museum, or some uh, classic master painter had done um, many, many years ago. So, and then I started to sharpen. So I just choose high pass uh, filter for the sharpening. And then again, because I wanted that painterly feel and I wanted it to look like an image what maybe was created in a by an old painter, I wanted to add the paint cracks to the image as you can see here. So I basically found a texture online and I just put it onto a, is it? onto a multiply blend mode and it just let all the white disappeared and just the dark was left of the cracks so it looks like when an aged painting uh, i don't know if i'll do this for all the images of this series but i quite liked it for this one so and then we did i did a final cleanup so it was just some of these areas at the back here so i've turned it on there's an area here what needed cleaning like so and then again, I just darkened the background as well there a little bit. And that was the final image. So I'll just zoom zoom out a little bit. So composition wise, I knew I wanted this um, model to be the kind of the focus point and then this area here. So where you can see it's actually York with the church and the wall to be the other focus point. And then these little areas around here is where the eye will go to afterwards. So obviously the model here has the greatest area of contrast. She's got more, um, she's sh sharper. She's got more contrast with the lantern light kind of glowing over here. And then obviously I think you would come up here, see this area here and the moon and this area. And that would kind of get, bring your gaze to the, like this, this is the church steeple, this is the wall. And then you would kind of go around these areas here. The wolves blend in a little bit to the background, which I like. But then you get the, the yellow of the eyes, which kind of draw your attention as well, which again is GAC, greatest area of contrast, just in this little area here. We've got the foreground element of the wolf and some of this foliage here blurred out, which creates depth. And then you've got all these interesting little dappled, uh, like, like the dappled light on these lumps creating interest as well. Um, so it was quite a big one, this image. I would say it took me around could be six maybe seven hours of photoshop work and that's not including the shooting time and um, there was a little bit of a we were going to shoot the model on location and then it was just raining and the weather was really bad so we decided to then obviously shoot the model in the studio and i kind of i'm glad we did that because it just meant i got to create this background from scratch uh, and sometimes it's fun doing that so anyway that's the process of this image all the layer processes and the adjustments that i used i hope you found this interesting and sometimes it's good just to go through an image like this layer by layer and see how it was put together i know it used to help me when i first started and hopefully it will help you so thanks a lot guys that's it if you did find this helpful please subscribe and share these videos uh, we appreciate all the love and the comments that we get in we're super excited to to be educating you and to be showing you um giving you tools to then create stuff on your own uh, so thanks a lot guys and i will see you next week